Hello, I'm Nicholas Fang. And I'm Genevieve Wu. Welcome to our one-hour Singapore Tonight budget special. As you've just heard, this is no ordinary budget. Yes, the Singapore government has unveiled a bold, whopping $20.5 billion Sing dollar budget to help Singaporeans keep jobs and viable companies stay afloat. The highly expansionary budget will result in an $8.7 billion deficit, the country's largest ever. And so for the first time, the government will be dipping into its reserves to draw $4.9 billion to fund two temporary and extraordinary measures, jobs credit and a special risk sharing initiative. Asha Popola reports. This year's budget is being delivered against a time of grave economic crisis, with Singapore looking likely to experience its deepest recession since independence. Unveiling the multi-billion dollar plan, which the government has dubbed the Resilience Package, Finance Minister Tharman Chanmugaratnam said the money will go into five main areas. Top on the list, $5.1 billion towards preserving jobs, $5.8 billion to stimulate bank lending, $2.6 billion for various tax measures to improve cash flow, another $2.6 billion to help households through moves like personal income tax rebates, and $4.4 billion to bring forward infrastructure spending plus health and education improvements. Despite these large numbers, Mr. Tharman cautioned that this will not get Singapore out of recession as long as the global economy continues to contract. What it will do, however, is to avert an even sharper economic downturn and more lasting damage to the economy. And with the end of the recession still nowhere in sight and no certainty as to when major economies will recover, the finance minister says he's prepared to do more from off-budget measures over the course of the year to more help over the next few years. Our key objective in this package is to help Singaporeans keep their jobs. The best way to give our people confidence during the crisis is to help them stay employed and retain the ability to support their families. And while addressing crucial short-term needs, Mr. Tharman said one advantage Singapore has is enough resources to keep an eye on developing long-term initiatives, even as he spent quite a bit of time explaining the rationale for drawing down on Singapore's reserves for the very first time. Unlike most countries, we do not borrow to fund the government budget. Our borrowings in the Singapore government securities market serve only to develop our capital markets and to provide a safe investment vehicle for the CPF board. We will likewise not have to borrow to fund our response to this crisis. We will not have to burden either current or future generations with the need to repay our spending in the resilience package. The President has also given in-principle approval to draw on the reserves. Saving jobs and helping Singaporeans upgrade their skills are among the driving factors in this year's resilience package. The measures will cost the government 5.1 billion Sing dollars. Dominic Lowe has the details. To help companies reduce the cost of employing Singaporeans during this exceptional downturn, the government will introduce jobs credit. Under the scheme, employers will receive a 12% cash grant of the first $2,500 of wages to keep local workers on their payroll. This will be equivalent to a 9 percentage point cut to the Central Provident Fund. The finance minister said the government did consider cutting the employer CPF contribution rate, but decided against it, as the fundamental problem with the current recession is global demand slump and not wage competitiveness. By designing the jobs credit to cover the first $2,500 of each employee's wages, and $2,500 is pegged to the median wage in Singapore, we are, in effect, giving companies special incentive to retain low- and middle-income workers, more than a CPF contribution cut would have achieved. Cost fee subsidies under the Skills Programme for Upgrading and Resilience, or SPUR, will also be increased to allow more professionals, managers, executives and technicians, or PMETs, to upgrade. During this economic downturn, some low-income workers may face lower wages or even shorter work hours. And this means a smaller take-home pay. And to help this segment of the labour force, the government is tweaking the Workfare Income Supplement with an additional 50% special payment. 
For example, someone aged 50 years taking home $1,000 a month will get $1,200 a year under workfare. They'll now get another $600 more. The government is also expected to create some 18,000 jobs in the public sector over the next two years. The $4.5 billion Sing Dollars Jobs Credit Scheme will help companies preserve jobs in the downturn. Employers will get a 12% wage grant from end March. This is capped at a monthly income of 2500 for every employee on its CPF payroll. The grants will be given to companies quarterly. For example, for a worker earning $2,500 a month or $7,500 every quarter, the employer will receive $900 in job credit every quarter. This is a one-year scheme, but the government says it may extend jobs credit to 2010 if the downturn continues. The government also announced new initiatives to help businesses obtain funding amid the current credit crunch. To encourage banks to lend to firms, it will take on a greater share of the risks involved. The move is aimed at helping more companies get access to credit and not just the small and medium-sized enterprises. May Wong with more. For local companies like Lucky Joint Construction, any government help is certainly welcome. During these tough economic times, banks have cut back significantly on lending. To address this, the government is launching a new special risk sharing initiative as part of Budget 2009. It'll expand the recently launched bridging loan program. This will now provide loans of up to 5 million Sing dollars, up from the current $500,000. The government will also raise its share of risk on these loans to 80%, up from the current 50%. Banks are still very, very nervous. Yes, 80% is a whole lot better than 50%. Is it enough to break the money out of the bank? The government has to put in place a system and a monitoring capability to be absolutely sure that it is and that that money flows out to companies that have the ability to repay. For the first time, the government will also take on the bulk of the risk for trade financing. They'll share 75% of the risk on the existing loan insurance scheme. This will also apply to the new program called Loan Insurance Scheme Plus. This will help firms based here get working capital and provide private insurance to banks against default by borrowers. The measures are expected to generate 11 billion Singapore dollars of loans this year. The government had previously only taken on the risk for lending of secured loans to small and medium-sized enterprises. But now it's taking on much more risk for loans to larger companies and even unsecured loans. Mr. Tharman says this is needed to help viable firms through this crisis and to protect jobs. We take a short break.